Hello, this video covers the materials needed to complete lab 3, which is about matrix algebra and solving linear equations in particular. We will first study special matrices in MATLAB, matrix operations, matrix functions, and then finally we're going to move on to solving a system of linear equations with the help of MATLAB using two different methods. Uh, there are special matrices in MATLAB that you can uh, create easily using built-in functions. The first is zeros, which we've used before. If you need to provide it with two inputs, the number of rows and the number of columns. And the function zeros basically creates a matrix composed of all zeros with a given size. The function ones creates a matrix composed of all ones, but you can easily create a matrix composed of all threes, for example, by simply creating a matrix composed of ones and then multiplying it by three and so on. The function rand uh, takes an integer as an input and it will create an n by n matrix containing pseudo-random values from the open interval 0 and 1. Rand i from its name will create a matrix of random integers between i min and i max. So you need to provide the minimum value and the maximum value as well as the size of the matrix you wanted to create. Notice that these functions can be used with different inputs, uh, maybe more inputs than what I've uh, put in this example, but this is a generic way to use them. You can use the command help and then the function name that's listed here um, to learn more about each of the functions. Moving on to the next function, the function diag takes an array um, uh, of the diagonal of a square matrix that you wanted to create. To learn more about it, again, experiment with it with the help of MATLAB. Just type diag and then uh, an array of random numbers you create. You will find out that diag will create a square matrix whose diagonal is given by the elements uh, in the array A. Function diagonal can also be used to extract the, the diagonal of a square matrix. You can provide it a matrix as an input and the output of it is going to be uh, an array containing the elements in the diagonal. The function i will create the identity matrix. Um, you can simply provide it with just one single input uh, or an integer in particular. It will create a square matrix uh, of size n by n, for example, uh, which is the identity matrix, meaning all its elements are zeros except the elements at the diagonal. They're going to have a value equals to 1. The function magic n, we're not going to use it in the lab, but it might be useful um, in the future, depending on your application uh, or your purpose. The function magic n takes an integer as an input and it will create an n by n matrix composed of integers from 1 through n squared uh, with equal row, column, and diagonal sums, meaning the elements in each diagonal will add up to the same number. The elements in each row will add up to the same number as well as the columns as well. And here you see examples of uh, calling the special matrices function. First, we're creating a matrix of size 2 by 3 whose elements uh, are random integers between negative 10 and 10. Uh, next, I'm calling the identity function, or the identity matrix function, i3, meaning I'm going to create a 3 by 3 matrix um, whose elements are all zeros except uh, at the diagonal where all the elements are 1, or the identity matrix of size 3 by 3. Next, I'm calling uh, the function diag, and I provided it with an array whose elements are 1, 2, 4, and 8. And diag outputs for me uh, a matrix, a square matrix, uh, consisting of all zeros, but whose diagonal is provided or is given by the input array that I provided, which is the 1, 2, 4, and 8. Now we're going to move on to the topic of matrix operations. Uh, we're going to start with array operators uh, and how to use them with matrices. With uh, earlier, um, studied array operators, but in this slide in particular, we're going to understand them in terms of matrices, but the concept still remains. 
that array operators means you want to perform uh, element-wise operations. So for example, if you type in MATLAB a dot times b, that means you want to multiply each element in a with its corresponding element in b. If you type a dot forward slash b, means you want to divide each element in a with its corresponding element in b. Um, if you type a dot then backslash b, that means it's left division, meaning you want to divide each element in b with its corresponding element in a. Finally, if you type in MATLAB a dot power b, that means you want to raise each element in matrix a to the power and the corresponding element in matrix b. Remember, I've always been saying um, the corresponding element, right? Meaning it is important that matrices, the matrices a and b uh, are equal in size. On the right hand side, we see examples um, of uh, power or actually array operators. We start first by creating two matrices. The first one is matrix A of size 1 by 3, um, whose elements are all two, but we used instead of uh, typing each element individually um, for A, what we did is we used the special matrix function once, and then we provided the size, which is 1 by 3, one row, three columns. And then instead of ones, we want twos. That's why we multiplied by two here. And the matrix A consists of all ones. We could simply type ones, one comma three, instead of spelling out each uh, single element in B. Uh, next, we type the command, uh, the command A dot uh, forward slash B, meaning A uh, array operator, division array operator, uh, and then divided by b and then the result is simply dividing each element in a with its corresponding element in b meaning 2 divided by 1 then 2 divided by 1 and so on which results in an array whose elements are all 2 and its size is 1 by 3. On the other hand if we type the uh, left division array operator so a dot left division b the result is going to be each element in b divided by its corresponding element in a that's why we have one divided by two and then one divided by two and so on which results in uh, an array of size one by three whose elements are all one half finally we're trying to raise each element in a with its corresponding element in b so a dot power b which results in uh, uh, raising 2 to the power 1 for each element uh, that we have in the result. So it will be 2 raised to the power 1, 2 raised to the power 1, uh, and so on, which is equivalent to just simply the matrix A itself. Next, we're going to cover matrix operations or um, matrix arithmetic using uh, MATLAB operators. First uh, operator is the transpose operator. You simply put an apostrophe after the matrix name and it will simply find the transpose of the matrix. And then when we say A times B in MATLAB without the dot, this will multiply matrix A with matrix B. A forward slash B divides matrix A by matrix B. A backslash B will left divide matrix A by matrix B. And finally, uh, A raised to the power N, or A hat N, will simply raise uh, the square matrix A to the power N. On the right hand side, we see examples. Uh, we first created a matrix, a square matrix named A, whose elements are 3, 4, 1, 5. And then we took the transpose of it. Notice what happened after we took the transposes. We swapped the locations of the rows uh, with the columns. And then we created another matrix named B, who has two rows and one column. So the size of A is 2 by 2. The size of B is 2 by 1, which means matrix multiplication is possible and it's allowed. So uh, next, we're trying the multiplication operator, the matrix multiplication operator. So we tied A times B. The result 
with a matrix of size 2 by 1, because it's the outer dimensions, uh, and let's give us the result of the matrix multiplication between A and B. Finally, we're raising matrix A to the power 2, meaning we are simply squaring the matrix A or multiplying it by, by itself. The last command here is equivalent to typing A times A, or A asterisk A. Now we're going to examine in more details the difference between right division and left division. We have an example, the same example, and we're trying to uh, bare form first right division and then left division on it. We've created a matrix named A of size 2 by 2 with random elements of 2, 4, 5, and 7. And then we created another matrix of size 2 by 2 whose elements are 3, 8, 1, and 9. On the right hand side, we are performing right division, meaning we're creating a matrix named X, for example, uh, and we are assigning it a value equals to the result of right dividing A by B, or A forward slash B. And then if we type X times B, meaning if we are multiplying X by B, the result should be exactly equivalent to matrix A. Now on the left hand side, we're performing a left division on the same matrices A and B. So we're creating a matrix named X whose values equal to A and then backslash B or um, we're using the left division operator. And then if we multiply the matrix A by the matrix X, the result will be exactly equivalent to matrix B. Putting these in formulas, we can find out that if X is equal to A forward slash B or A right division B, then we can rewrite this as x times b is equal to a. Uh, on the other hand, if x is equal to a left divided by b, then we can rewrite this expression as a times x is equal to b. If this seems confusing, it's fine, but it's going to be used later on once we move on to um, solving a system of linear equations with the help of uh, matrix left division. It will make more sense. Now we're going to move on to uh, MATLAB's built-in matrix functions. The first function is n of a, which simply returns a raised to the power of negative 1, or simply put, it will return the inverse of the non-singular matrix A. If a matrix is singular, it means you cannot find the inverse of it. Um, next, the function determinant, or det, det. Uh, det of A will simply return the determinant of the square matrix A. Dot A, comma B will return the scalar product uh, of vectors A and B. Cross A, comma B will return the cross product of vectors A and B. Of these four, we're mainly going to use uh, the env and the determinant function. On the right hand side, we see an example of uh, first a matrix of size 2 by 2 named A, and then we're gonna try to find the inverse of A using uh, matrix operations. Uh, in particular, we're typing A raised to the power of negative 1. And then if you call the function env A, you'll find out that the results are matching because inverse of A is equivalent to raising A to the power of negative 1. Next, we type the determinant of A or det of A. And the result was negative 6. And um, just to show you that it is equivalent to finding the determinant, we are, we are calculating the determinant manually by multiplying 2 by 7 and then subtracting um, 4 by 5 from the result. And the, end of, uh, the, the final result is also negative 6, which is exactly equals to the determinant 
of the matrix. Uh, finally, we're going to move on to the topic of solving a system of linear equations. We're going to um, try to um, do that or accomplish the solution using three different methods. Um, the first method is using matrix left division, a backslash, or mel divide. So the function mel divide and left division are equivalent, except uh, one uses uh, an operator, the other one uses a built-in function. Next, we're going to uh, solve uh, the system of linear equations using the function named uh, linsolve, and finally using symbolic math and the built-in function solve. Um, what you see here is the example uh, that we are going to try uh, to solve using the three different methods. The first method for solving a system of linear equations in MATLAB we're going to cover is uh, using matrix left division. Notice that uh, we can rewrite the set of equations given as matrices as such. So on the left-hand side, we have the equations themselves. And on the right-hand side, we see the constants as a column uh, vector. We can uh, analyze this further and rewrite the matrix on the left-hand side as the result of uh, multiplying two matrices. The first matrix consists of the coefficients of the unknown variables. The second matrix is a column matrix consisting of the unknown variables themselves. We left the right-hand side uh, constant column as it is. Now we can uh, assign names to the matrices here. The matrix uh, that consists of the coefficients, for example, we can name it A. The unknown uh, matrix, we can name it X and we can name the constant matrix on the right hand side b for example so the result would be a times x is equal to b and then knowing um, left division from earlier we can find uh, that can find out that x or the unknowns uh, matrix can be calculated as a left divided by b so let's start uh, coding this in MATLAB. We're going to need to uh, create a matrix named A that contains the coefficients of um, the unknowns. So the coefficients matrix A is equal to 3, 2, minus 1, and so on. Then we can simply translate that into MATLAB code as such. Notice that you can separate elements in the same row using either a comma or a space and elements and the uh, between rows you can separate them using a semicolon or a new line or a combination of both uh, next we need to define matrix b as such so b that will contain the constant on the right hand side then translating this in matlab simply becomes uh, b is equal to square matrix uh, sorry, uh, square bracket 10, semicolon 5, semicolon uh, minus 1, and then close the bracket, semicolon, because we don't want to read the result, we just want to use it for later calculation. And then we can simply uh, find the matrix division A backslash B, or the left division, and that translated into MATLAB code is as it is exactly. So A left divided by B is equal to minus 2, 5, minus 6. And we can simply now say that X1, X2, and X3 are equal to minus 2, 5, minus 6, respectively. There is another way to calculate left division in MATLAB. Instead of using the operator, the left division operator, you can simply call the built-in function ML divide which is short for matrix left divide. And this will take two inputs, which are the two matrices you want to uh, divide. But the result should be equivalent to, um, or exactly equal to, the result of that, of the, the operator. Now, uh, the final solution would be uh, the highlighted solution here, 
So x1 is equal to minus 2, x2 is equal to 5, and x3 is equal to minus 6. The second method we're going to uh, consider is using Linsolve. Um, the proof for Linsolve or the steps necessary to be taken for Linsolve are exactly similar to that of matrix left division. That's where we're just going to jump through the steps until we reach uh, rewriting the equations into the coefficient matrix A and then translating that into MATLAB code as such. And then we're, we're going to rewrite the constant matrix uh, as a matrix named Dewey, B, and then uh, code is in MATLAB. And then we can simply type uh, linsolve or call the function linsolve on matrices A and B. The result can be simply uh, used to figure out the, the unknowns or they are exactly the unknowns values. So x1 is equal to minus 2, x2 is equal to uh, 5, x3 is equal to negative 6. Notice that uh, in this system of linear equations, uh, each of the variables always have uh, a coefficient that is different from 0. We have three variables, and they're all always appearing in the equations. However, there's a possibility that you have a system of linear equations in which one of the coefficients um, in some of the equations is zero. For example, if you don't see the uh, x3 term in the last equation, that simply means that the coefficient of x3 is zero, so you need to put a zero uh, in place of it in the coefficient matrix. So remember not to skip uh, a coefficient or an unknown an unknown coefficient um, and and also make sure that the order of the variables uh, is correct so we always have or it's consistent throughout the equations so if you have x1 then x2 then x3 in the first equation uh, make sure you follow up with that order throughout uh, the set of equations that you have so the final solution here would be the highlighted solution here. The final approach we're going to use is using symbolic math and the built-in function solve. Um, and here we have three unknown variables, x1, x2, and x3. In MATLAB, it is possible to create variables that are symbolic. And the way to do that is to simply type sims, s, y, m, s, followed by the uh, symbol name. So we have x1, x2, and, and x3. We're going to type them uh, separated by a space. And then we're going to create a new variable named equation 1, in which we're going to type the equation, the first equation that we have, using MATLAB code, uh, a, con uh, co a combination of um, the MATLAB code that we've known, and instead of the variables, we're going to use symbolic variables this time, but it works exactly the same way. So we're going to say equation 1 is equal to 3 times x1 plus 2 times x2 minus x3 equals equals 10. Remember, the left term and the right term are equal. So we're not here assigning anything to anything apart from equation 1. So we're assigning the full equation 3x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 is equal to 10. We're assigning it to equation 1. So remember, the equal sign before number 10 should be equals equals, so double equal sign. Now we're going to rewrite um, the second equation um, after translating it into MATLAB code by simply typing equation 2 aq and 2 for short is equal to minus x1 plus 3 times x2 plus 2 times x3 equals equals to 5, so my colon. And finally, equation 3, eq and 3 is equal to x1 minus x2 minus x3 equals equals to minus 1. And finally, we can simply 
uh, create a variable that will uh, that will store inside the solution itself. We can name it sol or s o l, short for solution, is equal to then the solve function, and then inside our as uh, inputs, we're gonna put two arrays. First array will contain the equations themselves. The second array will contain the unknown variables. Notice that um, the square bracket here is optional, but I find it more organized uh, if you do it in this way. So this is the way I did it here. And uh, this solves the equations, but now uh, to read or to extract the results, we're gonna simply call them uh, by typing sol.x1, sol.x2, sol.x3. I'm gonna put them all in uh, a square bracket as such. So we'll say uh, sol.x1 semicolon to move on to the, to the next column and then uh, to the next row. Uh, and then semicolon again to move to the next row and so on. So the way I create the, the solution matrix is so that it will look like a three row by one column matrix. And notice that the results are exactly the same as what we obtained from the previous two steps. So x1 is equal to minus two, x2 is equal to five, and then x3 is equal to minus six. Here's another simpler example that explains symbolic math and built-in function solve. Uh, for example, if you have uh, an equation of just one unknown, 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, and we want to find uh, or solve for x, we can simply create a symbolic variable in MATLAB. We have just one symbolic variable, and that is x. We can say sims x, and then in the next line, we can solve for x by typing solve and then the equation itself but remember to replace the equal sign with two equal sign because we know they're equal so we're not assigning the left hand side to the right hand side we're simply saying that they are actually equal and then the results would be uh, in this case minus one half which is the solution that will uh, solve this uh, equation for us uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have questions related to the lab topics, please use the discussion forum on Moodle. And good luck.